Today I want to look at one of my favorite stories of divine encounter, where we get to see a prophet at his lowest and how God responds. In this, the third episode of the ongoing series, we look at the mystical experience of Elijah. So Elijah is famous for the tremendous showdown with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, where he is supposed to have called fire down from heaven and blown everybody away and proved once and for all that Yahweh is God. It's a dramatic victory for the good guy, that sort of thing. But what interests me more is what happens immediately after that. Elijah has just spent himself in this very public way. And maybe technically he won, but it doesn't seem to have paid off. He heads out into the wilderness alone and sits under a solitary broom tree. And he's so low that he contemplates suicide. But there in the wilderness, in that place of solitude, he is nourished by God despite himself. Eventually he falls asleep. And the impression we get is that he just keeps sleeping and sleeping. And a messenger from God comes to wake him up periodically, to give him fresh bread and water to sustain him. And based on that sustenance, Elijah begins the proverbial 40-day journey through the wilderness. And where does he go? To Horeb, to Sinai, where Yahweh appeared to Moses. And the first thing he does when he gets there? Sleep some more. I can't stress enough how much sleeping and eating affect your spiritual life. Because body and spirit are not opposites of each other. This is a spiritual body. This is the spiritual world. Eating and sleeping are fundamental, basic spiritual needs. Allowing ourselves to be loved enough to make sure that our needs are being met. Every time I've gone on a silent retreat, I sleep a lot that first day. Because the truth is, I don't take good enough care of myself. And I suffer for it. And I always find that on the other side of getting enough rest, it's much easier to be still and to enter the presence of God. And that's what happens with Elijah. He hears God speak. What are you doing here, Elijah? What do you mean? You told me to come here. But that's not really the question, is it? If a doctor says, see me in my office first thing in the morning. And then when you get there, he says, so why are you here? He's not asking about why you've come to that place. He's asking, what can I do for you? What do you want? What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah just spills it. Vents off all of his lament and despair. All of my work was for nothing. My people are dying. I'm lonely. And I'm scared. Yahweh says, meet me outside. I'm going to come to you. There was a great wind, and Yahweh wasn't in the wind. There was an earthquake. Yahweh wasn't in the earthquake. There was a great fire. Yahweh was not in the fire. These are all traditional signs of theophany. These are the symbolic cosmic events that happen when God shows up. The traditional religion that Elijah inherited said, this is how you find God. And that's not necessarily wrong, But Elijah was in this place where that wasn't working for him. He couldn't find Yahweh in all the usual places. Then there was the sound of sheer silence. Have you ever heard a silence that was so profound that it wasn't so much that you weren't hearing anything, but that you were hearing silence itself? When Elijah heard profound stillness and quiet, he went out to meet it. And Yahweh says... What are you doing here, Elijah? Same question as before. What do you want? That question is at the heart of the spiritual journey. In your deepest self, what is your truest, most profound desire? Follow that. Benedict said, It was God who made you desire. It is God whom you desire. What do you want, Elijah? And Elijah cries out his lament again. I've worked so hard for you, but everyone is turning away. Those who aren't turning away are being killed. 
I'm lonely. I'm scared. And Yahweh doesn't really give him an answer. At least not verbally. Because the gift of God is the experience of God's presence. Where questions like this don't necessarily disappear, but they're robbed of their horrible power. The gift of God is intimacy with the divine, which gives comfort in the midst of questions, which is hard for reason to explain. It seems to have made a difference for Elijah. One thing that makes this story unique and interesting compared to most theophanies is that in an odd way, God actually does address Elijah's concerns. Now that you're out of the pits of despair, Elijah, you're not alone. And you need to not be alone. You need the community. And because you still have work to do, I'm giving you a companion. An understudy. All of which is relevant to the spiritual life. Because mysticism thrives in a community with received tradition. And passing on the practices to the next generation is part of keeping them alive in yourself. And finally, the mysterious and sometimes terrifying presence of God is where all of our deepest questions belong. Because the answer to all those questions is not something that will satisfy our curious minds. The answer to all those questions is... You can trust me. Do you trust me? Does this Elijah encounter speak to you the way it speaks to me? What is it about it that's so captivating? And what does it tell us about God? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.